I went to a session with Scoop. We've been meaning to work for like two years. John Wayne's there. They put on a beat. I come up with this hook and this verse. That's pretty crazy. John Wayne and Scoop go on like a, a walk to the store. When they come back, I guess they had a powwow. And I was like, they already had a group called Digital Diamonds. I was an instrumental crew. And they just were like, yo, we want you in it. So I said, yeah, and then we dropped that song that day. It was like a 30-hour uh, process, pretty much. That's not what's happening. Let me explain this. I'm setting my beard down. It's, it's your both growing a solo artist, really, isn't it? We're best friends more. We're like really good friends more than we're bandmates. And we just understand where we're at. We want to do two totally different things, you know what I'm saying? So you're pulling the group in to totally different ways if you want to do two totally different things. We love what we did, and we love each other's opinions so much that it's like, oh, you want to do your solo shit? Here's some beats. Are you doing your solo shit? Send me something to rap on. It's just people always want to resort to worst case scenario. Like, you don't know that I go to this dude's house like once every other day and just eat. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we don't really make that much music as much as we hang out. No, we just knew we were dope enough that it didn't matter. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, oh, let's give it away for free. Like, our attitudes and our ego towards our music is what pushed us there because we don't need to hang out with y'all. We don't need your feature. You know what I'm saying? We feature on, our, on each other's shit. Like, people don't know a lot of my beats sound so similar even though they don't and it pisses me off you don't know, understand the art war i go through but that's i think that's what makes me have a sound you know what i'm saying like, i really hang out with myself when i'm doing shit because i don't do it like oh, i'm gonna make a radio record i'm gonna make a record for rihanna like i don't no offense to them i don't really give a fuck you know what i'm saying like when mac miller and all these people or like schoolboy and all them dudes pick beats it's usually the beat i hate like Schoolboy and Tehran have a, a song together that I didn't want him to rap on. I sent him like seven other ones, but they always want to rap on different shit. You know what I'm saying? So that's another dope thing too, because they picked the shit I was doing that wasn't intended for anyone. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of just like a little art war. I'm cool on the surface, but a crazy ass artist lives inside. My style is kind of inspired by the guys that I do like. Anra, and James Pants, and Dan Funk, and all these guys that have big ass worldwide followings from just instrumentals. Like I'm in a different vein, but I look up to those dudes and I think that their sound touches souls so much that they can do that. So to put that type of vibe under a more popular approach, I just think it's good for the world. We made Songs pretty much, as soon as I learned he could rap, I was like 14, I had Acid Pro, so that was all I wanted to do. And it was like my biggest goal to keep him out of the street and give him what I thought he was a genius at. And now it's actually happening, so it's pretty crazy, dude. So, but yeah, we didn't really do too much when we were little. It happened once I got to college and I made my decision that this was what I wanted to do. Cause he always knew me as an athlete. So once college was, you know, I went in. And now, that was one of my biggest goals. Me and Mikey and then Bodie James, so. Yeah, 412s was my first single from Convertibles that came out on Lucy's. And uh, me and him have a, a remix of that called 415s. Just talking about the same shit, but crazier, because he taught me a lot growing up. All that cool shit, you might not see it, but I got it from him, so. We're doing 415s, which is a larger version of 412s. They harden you. You know what I'm saying? There's no yes men. They're not gonna tell you it's dope. They might not tell you it's dope when it's dope. You know what I'm saying? So it makes you become way better. So that you get that confirmation from people you look up to. That type of shit. It's like playing with better athletes makes you better. Not really, because a lot of kids that are coming up aren't coming from that type of situation. You know what I'm saying? It's still the creative competition. Like when you're in a mind frame where you're not gonna come up ever, or you feel like you're not, then you're not. You know what I'm saying? Like these kids feel like they knew that shit from birth. I was gonna be this dude 
and they followed that shit out. Like, there's no, there's nothing you can tell me about Chance that he didn't think that this shit was gonna happen. Or Kanye, or Lupe, or us, or anybody from Chicago, or Common. Like, everybody knew what they were gonna do. So, even in Detroit, Detroit's just a little bit more, we don't need to shine. And we have some of the best rap artists ever, period. Like, point blank. Like, if you add Detroit up, we might fuck the rest of all your cities. It's just, we're like humble giants.